the nightly business report. Good evening. Tonight, with a focus on how important the GSP Plus program is to increase in Sri Lankan exports, Sri Lanka has reiterated its commitment to strengthening trade relations with the European Union. Despite continuing accusations in the United States against the company's top executives, the Essa Ports Authority has reiterated its commitment to maintaining stability for the Colombo West International Terminal project. On the fourth trading day of the week, the market kept up its upward trajectory, with the S&P SL20 seeing positive movement and the ASPI continuing its three-day winning streak. And the most recent inflation report raised fears that the Federal Reserve may reduce interest rates gradually in the upcoming year, which caused Wall Street's major indexes to close lower. From Studio 24, here's Sanuvi Mudanayaka. Good evening and thank you for joining us. Sri Lanka has reaffirmed its commitment to enhancing trade relations with the European Union, emphasizing the critical role of the GSP Plus program in boosting Sri Lankan exports. The GSP Plus offers tariff preferences, reducing duties on Sri Lankan exports to the European Union and underscores the importance of this trade agreement in strengthening economic ties. Sri Lanka's continued access to EU's GSP Plus trade preferences hinges on its commitment to implementing 27 international conventions related to labour and human rights, environmental sustainability and good governance. These conventions provide significant benefits to vulnerable communities, particularly in sectors like wearing apparel, where low-skilled female and rural workers are employed. In 2023, Sri Lanka exported goods worth 3.63 billion US dollars to the European Union and the United Kingdom, representing 30% of the country's total exports. The 1,301 products exported under the GSP Plus scheme focus on key sectors such as wearing apparel, rubber, seafood, and tea, with the EU and the UK accounting for over half of Sri Lanka's total apparel exports. The GSP Plus preference allows Sri Lanka to export many good tariff free, providing a competitive advantage in the European Union market. Without this benefit, tariffs would revert to the EU's most favoured nation rates, which would significantly increase costs, particularly in high value sectors like wearing apparel. A virtual meeting took place yesterday between President Anrakumar Desanayaka and World Bank Group President Ms. Ajay Banga to discuss Sri Lanka's development priorities. Mr. Banga emphasized the World Bank's support for job creation and development challenges, focusing on sectors like education, healthcare, and economic prosperity, along with agriculture, climate action, and digital transformation. President Desanayaka outlined the government's focus on poverty elevation, especially in rural areas, and the need to to boost government revenue through digitalization. He also highlighted and strengthening key sectors such as tourism, maritime, state-owned enterprises and energy with a focus on encouraging investment in power generation. Both leaders agreed on the importance of international collaboration to achieve Sri Lanka's long-term development goals and addressing pressing economic challenges. The Sri Lanka Ports Authority has reaffirmed its commitment to ensuring stability for the Colombo West International Terminal project, led by the Adani Group, despite ongoing allegations in the U.S. involving the conglomerate's top executives. SLPA Chairman Admiral Sirimewan Ranasinghe has emphasized that there are no immediate plans to reassess or terminate the agreement concerning the Colombo West International Terminal project, despite ongoing allegations against the Adani Group's top executives in the United States. The Adani Group has firmly denied all allegations, calling them baseless and committing to legal action. Notably, Adani Green Energy, at the heart of the bribery allegations, represents approximately 5% of the conglomerate's revenue, underscoring the broader financial and operational stability of the group. The West Container Terminal Project, Sri Lanka's largest foreign direct investment in its port sector, involves a 35-year $1 billion agreement. Once completed, the terminal will enhance Colombo's position as a leading transshipment hub in the Indian Ocean, capable of handling ultra-large container ships and further boosting regional trade. The Asian Development Bank would provide a 200 million US dollar policy-based loan to support Sri Lanka's financial sector stability and reform program. Subprogram 2, the finance minister said. The loan agreement was signed on Monday at the Treasury in Colombo. The program comprises two 200 million US dollar subprograms designed to implement multi-year policy reforms to create a stable financial system that provides access to finance for businesses across various sectors of the economy. Subprogram 
Program 1 focused on enhancing the financial sector's crisis management framework. 200 million US dollars was fully dispersed in December 2023, following the successful completion of all required policy actions. Subprogram 2 seeks to build a resilient and inclusive financial system. The Finance Ministry said all pre policy actions for Subprogram 2 have been successfully completed and the 200 million US dollar loan proceeds would soon be dispersed to the Treasury. As the long weekend break for Eid al-Fitr approaches, Danata Travels has revealed the top holiday hotspots for 2024, with Sri Lanka ranking among the top five most popular international destinations for UAE travellers, alongside Thailand, Maldives, the UK and Turkey. Thailand remains the top international holiday destination for UAE travellers, holding on to its position from the last year's Eid al-Fitr weekend. However, Sri Lanka has emerged as a student new entry with bookings nearly doubling compared to the same period last year. So far, 85% of all bookings are from international travel, while 15% are from UAE staycations. As is typical, staycations tend to be booked closer to the holiday, so this is balance may shift towards regional stays and staycations as November progresses. Ras Al Khaimah is proving particularly popular this year thanks to a growing selection of newly renovated and reimagined hotels offering unique experiences. Matthew Vlemix, who is the Dinata Travel Leisure Manager, highlighted that Sri Lanka, always a popular destination, is firmly back on the map for Eid al-Fitr this year. With its short flight time, excellent value for both the air and on the ground, and a diverse range of offerings including natural landscapes, wildlife spotting, beautiful beaches, historic landmarks and incredible cuisine, Sri Lanka continues to captivate UAE travellers. <laughs> Let's take a short break now. This is Nightly Business Report. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. The market continued its upward trend on the fourth trading day of the week, with the ASPI maintaining gains for the last three days and the S&P SL20 also showing positive movement. For further insights, we speak with Vinodhani Rajapupati from First Capital Holdings. Thank you. The Colombo Stock Exchange extended its positive momentum for the third consecutive session, driven by heightened participation from both retail and high net worth investors despite mixed sentiment in the broader market. Investors were bullish on banking sector stocks with significant interest in Sampath Bank, HNB Commercial Bank and NDB. Additionally, select hotel sector stocks also attracted notable interest throughout the trading session. Consequently, the All Share Price Index closed the day at 13,164, marking a gain of 115 points from the pre previous session, whilst the S&P SL20 index also rose by 41 points to conclude the day at 3,918. Meanwhile, the market turnover increased by 35% compared to the monthly average, settling at 5.1 billion rupees for the day. The banking sector led the market turnover, contributing 54%, while the capital goods and consumer services sectors collectively accounted for 27% of the total turnover. The top three gainers for the day were Blue Diamond Stone Voting, Ceylon Printers and Lake House Printers and Publishers. Meanwhile, the top three losers were the Nuvarelia Hotels Company, Pegasus Hotels of Ceylon and Standard Capital. Central Bank Governor Nandalal Virasinghe stated that the holders of Sri Lanka's defaulted sovereign bonds have strong incentives to participate in the exchange launch this week, resulting in a high take-up rate. For further insights, we speak with Anjali Matthews from First Capital Holdings. Today's bond auction saw increased levels of demand and buying interest as the Central Bank of Sri Lanka raised Rs 205 billion, yielding full acceptance across all three maturities offered, where Rs 205 billion was accepted and the total bids offered were Rs 486.3 billion. The 15-10-28 bond closed at a weighted average yield rate of 10.62%, with Rs 80 billion being fully accepted while the 15-3-2031 bond closed at a weighted average yield rate of 11.28%, with Rs 75 being fully accepted. 
Additionally, the 111-2033 bond closed at a weighted average yield rate of 11.40%, with rupees 50 billion being fully accepted. Additionally, the secondary market yield curve also experienced increased buying sentiment and notable declines in yield rates, especially on the short to mid end of the curve, primarily amongst the 2026, 2028, 2029, 2030, and 2033 maturities. Gold prices edged lower today as the U.S. dollar strengthened, with investors carefully evaluating a stream of economic data that pointed to persistently high U.S. inflation. Spoke gold declined by 0.1%, settling at $2,633.31 per ounce, while U.S. gold futures dropped 0.4% to $2,632.80. The strong inflation readings raise concerns that the Federal Reserve may proceed cautiously with further interest rate cuts, as it continues to navigate the balance between supporting economic growth and keeping inflation in check. The firmer dollar put pressure on gold, which typically moves inversely to the currency. As inflationary pressures persist, traders remain cautious about the Fed's next steps, with some speculating that interest rate cuts could be slower or more limited than previously expected. This uncertainty has prompted investors to closely monitor the ongoing economic data, further weighing on gold's performance in the short term. Oil prices remained largely unchanged in Asian trade today, as mixed U.S. inventory data added uncertainty to supply outlooks, while easing tensions in the Middle East produced oil's risk premium. Brent crude for January delivery edged down 0.1% to $72.78 per barrel, while West Texas intermediate crude held steady at $68.33 per barrel. Crude prices have experienced some losses this week after Israel and the Lebanese militant group Hezbollah agreed to a ceasefire in Lebanon. However, Israel's continued offensive in Gaza has dampened hopes for broader stability in the region. The weakening US dollar helped limit overall losses in oil prices, although ongoing tensions between Russia and Ukraine kept some risk factors in play. The Sri Lankan rupee held steady against the US dollar in commercial banks today, showing little change compared to yesterday. According to the commercial bank, the buying rate for the US dollar has increased, while the selling rate remains unchanged. Let's now take a look at how the Sri Lankan rupee is performing against other major global currencies. Show break now. This is the nightly business report. Welcome back. The Commercial Bank of Ceylon has been ranked as the strongest bank in Sri Lanka in the prestigious DAB Global 1000 Strength Index 2024. The strongest banks' rankings are based on a comprehensive and transparent scorecard that evaluates banks and financial holding companies across six key balance sheet performances criteria, which are scalability, balance sheet growth, risk profile, profitability, asset quality, and liquidity. These criteria are assessed through 14 specific key performance indicators, including assets, loan and deposit growth, loan to deposit ratio, capital adequacy, operating profit growth, return on assets, cost to income ratio, non performing loans ratio, liquidity coverage, and non stable funds ratio. Additionally, Tab Insights evaluates non interest income, loan loss reserves, and liquid assets as a percentage of total deposits and borrowings. Since 2007, the Asian Bank has published its annual ranking of the strongest banks in Asia-Pacific region, focusing on balance sheet strength. The rankings have become a trusted benchmark for investors, analysts and media worldwide. Last year, the rankings expanded to include the top 1,000 largest and strongest banks globally. 
Sri Lankan Airlines was honoured with the prestigious Best Airline Partner title at the Tamil Nadu Tourist Awards Night, recognising its exceptional contributions to boosting tourism in the southern Indian state. This accolade is the airline's second major recognition in recent months, following its win at the leading international airline in South Asia at the South Asian Travel Awards in September. The Tamil Nadu Tourist Awards highlight airlines that have significantly impacted the state's tourism sector. With nearly 35 weekly flights connecting Chennai, Tiruchipalli and Madurai to Colombo, Sri Lankan Airlines has cemented its position as a key player in supporting inbound tourism for shopping, pilgrimage and medical travel. In addition to its services in Tamil Nadu, the airline operates closely to 90 weekly flights across India, including to Delhi, Mumbai, Hyderabad, Bengaluru and Koshin. Union Assurance enhances community well-being with its CSR program, Suamaga, tackling the growing diabetes issue in Sri Lanka through a nationwide initiative. The Suamaga program designed to improve health outcomes focuses on diabetes awareness, promoting healthier lifestyles, supporting early detection and fostering community engagement. As a part of this initiative, Union Assurance launched the Suamaga mobile screening unit yesterday at Cinnamon Lakeside in collaboration with the Ministry of Health and Diabetes Association of Sri Lanka. This fully equipped mobile unit offers free diabetes screenings conducted by certified healthcare professionals, providing participants with health reports and personalised guidance for managing health risks. The mobile screening unit will travel across Sri Lanka from urban centres to rural areas, ensuring free testing is accessible to all, regardless of whether they are union assurance customers, thereby improving public access to healthcare services. Through this initiative, Union Assurance aims to make a significant impact on public health nationwide. East of Metro Campus Limited has partnered with the Federation of Information Technology to support the next generation of tech talent. This collaboration was formalized with a Memorandum of Understanding, designating ESOFT as a title partner for the Young Computer Scientist Competition from 2024 to 2028. The signing ceremony was attended by distinguished representatives from both organizations, including Dr. Diane Rajapaksha, Managing Director and Chairman of ESOFT, and Mr. Indika Dezoiza, Chairman of FITIS. The partnership aims to inspire young tech enthusiasts and foster collaboration between the ICT education and industry sectors. The YCS competition organized annually by the software chapter of FITIS with the Ministry of Education and the University of Colombo School of Computing encourages students to innovate and explore ICT applications. Dialogue Axiara PLC is proud to announce the launch of its AI-powered assistant on the IdeaBiz platform, offering dedicated support to developers, IT teams and IdeaBiz partners. Powered by cutting-edge generative AI technology, the IdeaBiz AI assistant delivers highly accurate, context-aware responses providing seamless access to technical support from IdeaBiz APIs. This state-of-the-art tool significantly enhances user experience and operational efficiency, reducing the need of human intervention. By streamlining onboarding, accelerating project timelines and simplifying API integration, it boosts productivity and satisfaction for developers, IT teams and startups. Available 24-7, the IdeaBiz AI Assistant offers instant, clear answers to queries, making technical support as accessible as a conversation. It simplifies complex processes, allowing users to manage projects and integrate APIs without the hassle of navigating extensive documentation. Looking ahead, this groundbreaking tool is set to evolve into a comprehensive coding assistant, equipping developers with advanced features to optimize workflows and drive project success. Let's take a short commercial break. Global business updates coming on the other side. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. Most Asian stock markets fell today as investors remained cautious about the US interest rate outlook following a stronger-than-expected inflation report. China's Shanghai Shenzhen CEO 
MSCI 300 index dropped 0.4%, while the Shanghai Composite Index remained largely unchanged. Hong Kong's Hang Seng Index declined 1.2% in Southeast Asia, Thailand's Set Index fell 0.3%, and the Philippines' PSEI Composite Index lost 0.8%. Meanwhile, India's Nifty 50 futures pointed to a muted open. However, Japan's Nikkei 225 and Topics indexes bucked the trend, rising 0.6% and 0.5% respectively. Wall Street's main indexes closed lower after the latest inflation data sparked concerns that the Federal Reserve may move slowly on rate cuts next year. Wall Street's main indexes closed lower on Wednesday after the latest inflation data sparked concerns that the Federal Reserve may move slowly on rate cuts next year. The Dow dipped three-tenths of a percent, the S&P 500 shed almost four-tenths, and the Nasdaq lost six-tenths of a percent. The latest inflation data showed prices ticked up slightly in October, putting the annual inflation rate at 2.3 percent. Those numbers were in line with expectations, leading most traders to bet the Fed will cut rates at its December policy meeting. Stocks on the move Wednesday included Dell, which slumped 12 percent, and HP, down almost 6 percent, after downbeat quarterly forecasts from the personal computer makers. The sentiment spread to NVIDIA and Microsoft, which both closed lower. And Workday slipped more than 6 percent after forecasting fourth-quarter subscription revenue below expectations, hit by weaker client spending on its human capital management software. Markets will be closed Thursday for the Thanksgiving holiday. Volkswagen will exit its controversial plant in China Xinjiang region after years of investor pressure to abandon its presence in the region, where right groups have documented abuses, including mass forced labor in detention camps. Volkswagen will exit its controversial plant in China's Xinjiang region. It comes after years of investor pressure to abandon its presence there. Rights groups have documented abuses, including mass forced labor in detention camps. Beijing denies any such abuses. VW and its Chinese partner agreed to sell the asset to a Shanghai government-owned buyer. The transaction value of the deal was not revealed. The significance of the plant, which used to assemble Volkswagen Santana vehicle, has dwindled in recent years. The German carmaker cut jobs at the plant, leaving about 200 employees to conduct final quality checks and hand over vehicles to dealers in the region. VW has denied reports that it kept the plant open as a condition from Beijing to keep producing across China. The decision to free itself from the plant comes as VW is battling to boost flagging sales in China, its biggest market, amid intense competition and sluggish demand. Europe's car companies also have to contend with the impact of a potential trade war between Beijing and the European Union. That's after the EU imposed anti-subsidy import tariffs on China-made electric vehicles. That's all from us on the Nightly Business Report for today. We'll see you again tomorrow with the latest updates in the Business Group. Until then, I'm Sonia Mudal Naika. Thank you for watching and have a good night.